The first video I ever loaded on YouTube, that was back in January 2015, was about this beetle, the green scarab beetle. But 2015 wasn't the first time that I saw this beetle in large numbers. For that we have to go back to 2006, the year of the massive Grampians bushfire. The fire burned for a couple of weeks or so, um, from about uh, late January to early February, and it burned through more than 130,000 hectares, including about half of the Grampians National Park. This pano shows the eastern side of the Grampians. This is what was left of much of the bushland. After a few weeks, many of the gum trees began to recover, but importantly for this story, as you can see, there's not much undergrowth. In other words, there aren't many understory plants recovering. Now fast forward to about October of the same year, 2006, springtime. I started seeing some of these green beetles and hearing reports about them eating the leaves of various plants, including rose bushes and grapevines and fruit trees. Given that half of the National Park had burnt out about seven months previously, along with many surrounding properties, where had these beetles come from? To understand that, we need to look at the life cycle of this beetle. Unfortunately, very little work has been done on the biology of the green scarab beetle. But I did find this lovely illustration from the 1890s. Green scarab beetle has one generation per year. Importantly, this illustration shows the larva. It's a classic scarab beetle curl grub, and they are usually found underground. Indeed, the green scarab beetle larvae feed on the roots of plants underground, and they also pupate underground. So during the bushfire that summer, the beetles were below ground as larvae, but when the adult beetles emerged from underground seven months later in spring and flew off looking for their food plants, which are things like tea tree and uh, Melaleucas and wattles. Because of the bushfire, their usual food plants were few and far between, so they made do with whatever they could find. All this had a severe impact on the green scarab beetle population. The year after that, it was hard to find one of these beetles. I can only assume that was because of the lack of food for the adult beetles because of the bushfire. So consequently, not many eggs were laid therefore not many larvae, and therefore not many adult beetles emerging the following spring. In fact, it took a few years for green scarab beetles to build back up into significant numbers. Like the swarm of beetles I showed in my very first YouTube video. But why do they congregate like that in those swarms? The purpose of the swarm is to meet a mate and to feed and then of course for later on for the females to lay eggs in the soil and on goes the life cycle. If you like this video so far, please give it a thumbs up. Thanks. But let's get back to that 19th century illustration. It's the work of this dude, Charles Clifton Brittlebank. He packed an awful lot into his life. He was a plant pathologist, a mycologist, a scientific illustrator, a university lecturer and a farmer. He's worth checking out if you are interested in history. Back then, in the late 19th century and the early 20th century, they called these beetles cherry green beetles because they fed on the leaves of cherry trees. To control them, they used the insecticides known as London Purple and Paris Green in cherry orchards. These insecticides were both byproducts of the dye industry, arsenic based and extremely toxic. Alarmingly, these toxic chemicals were used in cherry orchards, even though the beetles only ever ate the leaves of cherry trees, never the fruit. These days, green scarab beetle is not considered to be an orchard pest worth controlling. I've got a cherry tree here and green scarab beetles have never damaged it because there are abundant native plants around that they prefer to feed on. Green scarab beetles tend to chew away the upper layer, the epidermis, of leaves and shoots and then lap up the sap. When a large number of beetles feed on a plant, it can leave it looking burnt and with lots of wilting shoots. Plants can look pretty terrible for a while, but they soon recover. 
This plant here was damaged by them back in 2014. Here is the same plant last November. It's now many times bigger than it was and it is flowering away happily. And oh look, beetles. No worries. The plant is now big enough not to be bothered by them. The beetles certainly don't bother me. I think they're rather lovely. You have to ask yourself, when is an insect a pest? Just because an insect feeds on a plant doesn't make it a pest. Especially if it's a native insect feeding on its preferred native plants in a bush setting. They are just doing their thing and being part of the environment. If you want to watch another video about a, another native insect that is also not a pest, but may bother some people because it's unsightly, check this video out here. And thanks for watching.